I'll give you a little setup for this song we're going to sing. I had a, a woman who came and would come to my kitchen table. Uh, I started doing all these teachings back in back in the 1980s and 1990s, and so in the 2000s or the early 2000s, she would come and sit at my kitchen table, and she would listen to hours and hours of cassette tapes of these kind of gatherings while she was walking through the cemetery. Don't ask me why. Uh, but she would boil it down to the question of the day, then she would come and talk to me, and we would call upon the Spirit, and the answer would pour through, and she would be thrilled. And then she started receiving all these songs from the angels. Uh, we were talking about angels on our way over. We were walking here today, and, and so we, I think about 250 songs from the angels, some of them two and three part harmonies came pouring through, really <laughs> magnificent stuff. So we're going to sing a song that's, that's we'll say, channeled by the, from the angels. <laughs> And uh, if anybody thinks angels are just these characters with these big wings and everything, it's more like, uh, what's that movie, Michael, uh, with John Travolta? It's more like they don't adhere to any stereotypes. So this song is kind of like, uh, they're showing how modern and up-to-date and contemporary they are. They're not so traditional. This, this song we're going to sing is called Streaming Dreamio from the Angels.
that for a sing-along that's song, huh? Yeah. That's an interesting song. These angels don't mess around. <laughs> Got a good sense of humor there. Okay, now we're the choir. We, we will sing back. You know, like responsive reading. This is responsive singing. We're singing back to the angels. <laughs> Show them what we're made of here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, they're helpers, and we're helpers. <laughs> audio and streaming video, the faster way to go, when you have to download, but now you need to know about the crazy show called streaming and radio. Get organized or fix, prioritize the script, from fonts you can the ones you like, one seamless tapestry, all collage of dreams. Sit back and watch the scenes, the spirit lights. A person you are not, your world's based on the thought that you deserve and got, and now your soul is lost. But now it's time to wake and face your big mistake. Call streaming. You've got to watch your mind for thoughts that are unkind or keep you stuck in time like flies and glue. No need to get upset, you can't adjust the scent. The only choice you get is your point of view. The images that pass before perceptions pass will never. Feeling sick, you only think you think it's dreaming. Dreaming, I know it seems so real, but joy is what you feel when truth at last reveals. With God, you're one, you dwell within his mind, no forms of any kind can limit or define God's holy son. Pleasure and the pain are really all the same. You cannot rearrange or try to win the game. Relax and let it go. That's all you need to know. I'll scream it. Dream me Sacrifice and penance and the Lamb of God had to be slain for the sins of mankind. It's really quite a wild trip. So no wonder people will get into Buddha and Krishna and all kinds of other things. It's pretty sharp. But actually, the angels um, gave us a song that I think is really good for Easter weekend. It's uh, um, Helena went in to try to, to look it up on her MP3 player. I've got it somewhere on mine, but this is from the angels, and it's called. Uh, come down from the cross. Uh, and so, are you passing out the other one, the ego song? No, I haven't got that. Haven't got that. Which one is this one? Come down, from, come down the from the cross. Oh, we've got it on, we've got the lyrics even. Oh, cool. This is going to be a really heating. We'll let this song go out to the whole universe. Uh, come down from the cross. Yeah, a little bit of the tune is kind of, it goes like, Come down, come down, from come, come down from the cross. There is no sin and your soul is not lost. You have been dreaming a world of sad thoughts. Come down, come down from the cross. So that's kind of our tune. So we're going to send this up to the whole universe. Uh, here we are. Friday was when Jesus was crucified. Saturday he was supposed to have gone down 
you know, to face Satan and overcome Satan and everything. And then Sunday was the day of the resurrection. So I'm sure he was humming this song while he was down visiting Satan. Uh, because Satan is the symbol of the cross, of death. And the resurrection is about the transcendence, seeing that there is no death. That you can't kill who you are. So, um... Um... I don't remember which particular one. It might have been, um... I think it's, well, whenever it, it's something, a thought comes to mind about being something in form, even something like the caffeine or something, then that's a good one to just kind of watch it go by because the, what we're learning as we go much deeper is that this is a world of effects and that all of the effects of this world come from an unreal cause, which is the ego. The ego made up this world of separation and isolation and it seems to be some beauty, but there's also you know, a lot of uh, cannibalism, animals, the animal kingdom, killing, uh, destruction, diseases, pain, suffering, death. And basically, so anytime you have a thought like maybe it's the caffeine or something, those are opportunities for forgiveness because there are no causes or effects in this world. They're just a bunch of images that, that the mind gives meaning to. Now, the part about feeling, starting to sweat and, and everything goes, that happens quite a lot. Um, I know the first time I went back to a church after years and years of being away, I had all kinds of feelings coming up because of all these associations. So, yeah, it's very possible that you're right onto it, that, that here we are doing a sing-along, and, and you hear the word angel, and we mention the word Jesus, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, here we are, it's the congregation. I'm, it's like I'm this little girl, and I'm back in the, I'm in the pew. <laughs> I'm in the, and, and so those kind of feelings can come up, and then, what we're doing now with these kind of songs like the one we're going to sing is part of a gentle washing away of those fearful connotations and, and old associations that really didn't resonate with us, you know, that really that didn't really resonate with our soul. And so it's, you might say, a retranslation or a reinterpretation of things. And actually I was guided not only to go back to churches, but I've, I've given talks in churches, just as well as here in Kalani, and it was surreal, you know, walking up there and then looking, and I'm putting my hands down on a pulpit, and I'm going, this is really surreal, because I was like, I, I always thought I will never be giving a talk from a pulpit, you know, ever, but then the Spirit's like, just relax, it's just all symbols, we're just washing away those old associations in the mind. So, I think you're right on to it. I'm glad you brought it up, though, there's a line in here is, does it bring me joy or a stab of pain? And, you know, I have this panic or, you know, it's uh, just this mo those moments of association with stuff. I've heard there's the movie that happened the other night or not. So I appreciate you sharing it. I really share it, put it out there. It's up a discipline. Yeah, it feels so great. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way when you can bring it up. That's a, it's a good example, too, for relationships, when you can just have that, that openness in relationships where you can just say, huh, I'm feeling a little uneasy, or I'm feeling this or that, and you just bring it up. 
And then you can talk about it and just say, oh, it's just some associations maybe that I've got going on in my consciousness that, that are loosening. And, oh, thank you for being present and, yes, and for allowing me to do that. You know, you can feel that. And thanks for demonstrating that here because it's, uh, it's a good witness of how the, how the healing can occur. And then you light up and you feel, oh, it feels a lot better. Yeah, the rusty bowl is <laughs> falling off your head too. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. That's a good example of wanting to get rid of it. It's like we saw that, oh, I have these feelings and I don't want to have them. It's like, oh my God. And it's so beautiful to open up like you did yesterday too. Yeah. And I was, in the parable of David, I was raised in Christianity, so I had a lot of mind training, a lot of cleansing and purification to do with a lot of that old theology and uh, went through all these hoops to get confirmed and people pleasing and pressure and things. Then when I got to university I just started to open my mind to all different kinds of philosophies and little by little let this stuff start to wash away. Then when the course came in it was like, ah, oh, it's Christian terminology, <laughs> mar washing, you know. And with Helena she she had the same thing. Yeah. I was reacting a lot when I started reading the Course when, because it was like that terminology that I had been running away from. Actually, I grew up in a very, very like strict Christian family and everything was about Christianity. Like all my friends were there, all my relatives, like everything. All of the camps that I did, all the choirs, everything was just evolving Christianity. So I, I withdrew when I was like in my late teenage years and then when I, and then I thought I didn't need God anymore, you know, and all that. And then, like, step by step, I was being called back again to go within. And then there was, like, all these New Age books, and then came a course, and then it was like, oh, my God, Christ and Holy Spirit again. <laughs> it's like these words, like, I can't stand it. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to really hear that. So that was flushing up for me, just like you were saying now, it's like, oh my god, I'm like sweating, and oh my god, what am I going to do? It's like, oh, this feels uncomfortable, and so I got to express that too, like, it just, just doesn't feel like really nice for me right now with these words, you know, and just for me to see that, that those were just words, that we're just using the words to kind of describe something that is beyond, and we really have to use all of the symbols, it seems to be in the world, to be able to go beyond to get the experience. In fact, uh, at one point Helena shaved her head and got a tattoo. So it was part of the, part of the, that's it for God. <laughs> or that's it for Christianity. No, that was, that's it for what? No. Actually what happened was that um, I was working in the States and um, I came home one day and it felt like it was something talking to me that was saying really strongly, follow your heart. And that was so strong that I felt I'd never want to forgive, for never forget this. And so, and I had had the thought of shaving my hair and um, shaving my head, um, shaving my hair off and uh, put a tattoo on the head. So since I'd thought about that before, I just went ahead and did it. And <laughs> that was really interesting period. So, um, that's, that's kind of actually how I felt. I had been away from God for so many years. It was like years and years. And then when I got this intuitive feeling of follow your heart, it was so strong for me. It was like God was calling on me again. So that was like actually bringing me back 